Hey everyone and good morning and welcome to Friday Live. My name is Ashley Hay and today I've got Natalie Parrish on with me from Bag End Studios and we've got both going to be talking about wearable art. So super, super, super excited um, to be here again with you this week and I hope you thoroughly enjoy this session. You're definitely in for a treat as we talk about Natalie's amazing wearable art garments. So yeah, before we go there though, I just wanted to do a little bit of a recap because this is kind of like part two of what we talked about last week. So if you did miss last week's episode, we were basically talking about art bras and we, um, Natalie did a uh, fundraiser in Queensland and we did a fundraiser here in WA. And the one that we did here was called Uplifting Art Bras for a Cause. And I said last week that I had another couple of inspiring art bras that I wanted to show you. And so I will pop those up now so you can actually have a look at them. They are by art bras by Sue Called Bank from WA. And as I say, they were for uplifting art bras for a cause and they are spectacular. So let's take a look at these. And I'll just show you. So she did one called Hooter, which um, isn't that just terrific. So they are both done with Powertex and um, they are both just absolutely gorgeous. So that's Hooter. And then this one is a family affair. And you can see this one is actually done with um, Easy 3D Flex and uh, some stone art and some little bits of string and things and of course Vista which um, it's just gorgeous. This one actually won a prize in the um, exhibition for one of the best artworks so it is just a really very cool piece. So a bit of fun, a little bit quirky to boot and um, I know Sue loves quirkiness and they're both um, super quirky and super cute and just beautiful artwork. So um, thanks, Sue, for um, letting us share that today. And um, it is just amazing. So with no further ado, let's bring Natalie on. And so um, welcome, Natalie. And, you know, thanks for coming on today. It's super nice to have you here. Oh, hang on. That was my job to unmute myself. <laughs> okay, so welcome. Hello, everyone. How's everyone going today? I think I can <laughs> see the comments today as well. So woohoo. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> so, yeah, if you're here, it would be wonderful if you just drop us a line, say hello and let us know where you're from and whether you've done any wearable art yourself and whether the art bras are inspiring you to create something. So we'd love to hear from you and hear your comments. So, Natalie, I know the first thing we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about your piece, Ascension, and I'll pop you up on the full screen and so that everyone can see that beautiful background background that you've got there with all your beautiful artworks oh hang on that's me <laughs> okay there you go okay so I have got my pieces out here so before I destroy them by bringing them over and unplugging myself but we thought see I have to unplug okay We are going to nut that out, aren't we, Ash, and not have earbuds? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, okay, so with the Ascension piece, uh, and probably part of the reason why I did this with Michelle Payne from The Artist Tree uh, and came up with this idea um, to do the Art Bra uh, charity cause, I actually did one back in Broome in about 2003, uh, and we had like a big 14-day International Women's Day festival that I created and drove everybody mad with in Broome. But one of the things we did was the bra exhibition and it was such a hit. And so many people can get involved as well. And um, there's a, a lot of, for a lot of people doing the art bras, there is actually a lot of meaning put into them because a lot of people have been affected in some way by cancer, either personally or a loved one. And so that was this piece. At the time, my best friend's sister-in-law was 
um, going through breast cancer um, and terminal and, and knew that she wasn't going to make it. So I was getting stories from her about all these things that she was doing to leave for her husband and her children and how she'd go away for a weekend just to write like their birthday cards for the next 15 years or 20 years or however long. I'm not quite sure how many she actually ended up writing, but I was just uh, really taken by the this idea of, um, you know, ascending. When you know you're going to ascend <laughs> and what do you do about it and how you don't really want to let go and, yeah, just planning, like trying to future-proof your children to let them know that you're still there when you're not there. So it was very sad. Um, and that's why this came up. And uh, interestingly, Zora was staring there, me in the face, and I realised it looked like she had the little hat on that the lady used to wear when she come to our, uh, when she come to parties and stuff. Uh, we had a few gin parties, or she had a few gin parties. I had one party with her. <laughs> um, and then interestingly, when she did, pass away the little heart broke off a bit on one hand hmm. so I, I've left it like that you know kind of that having to how do you let go how did she do that I was just so in awe of her strength and resilience yeah I don't know whether I would have been able to have done that but yeah she was the most amazing lady so that was in honor of her really um yeah and you I, I can't wear it <laughs> but it's one of my girls can Natalie it's absolutely yeah yeah beautiful. And the story behind it is gorgeous. And it was and actually a bra. So at one point. Oh, hang on. That's all right. So you can still see. Yeah, it was yep. actually a, a bra originally. You just with Zora stuck in the middle, basically. Yeah, it's absolutely beautiful. And um, like I say, the story is just gorgeous. And yeah, like you say, a bit heartbreaking. Mm -hmm. um, it was. Yeah. Um, but these mm. things inspire us to more, don't they? And so um, it was a great, such a great um, cause to be part of and to have uh, to do that exhibition. I know it was a privilege for us here in WA and it sounds like it was amazing for you over there in Queensland too. So, yeah. Yeah, so those absolutely amazing pieces. It's amazing, you know, just when you, like we had even some men involved, which was really always nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, to have men involved in your uh, art exhibitions uh, and because men do get breast cancer as well. Um, not many of them, but they still do. Uh, and also we had well, one man, I think, it put in an entry because his wife and um, so it was in for his wife, which is lovely. Uh, yeah. Um, oh, so then the next one I did was... So I'll start for Fenchon just so that they can actually see how beautiful that piece is. And, of course, you've used power text to actually create it, Natalie. So you mentioned mm -hmm. that the plaster is one of the Zora, Zora is one of the plaster heads available from power text. And have you used the female hands on there as well? Yes, of course. Yep. <laughs> and you've got some beautiful colours. Did you... what? Um, was the base colour you did the whole piece in? So these are two of my, actually this combination, this group of three, I use quite a lot. Um, they'd be my, one of my favourite combos, which is the bronze gold and then I use the pearl red and the white silver. Yeah, it's stunning colours. And yeah, they, so with the Powtex Ultimate Medium, which colour did you use? Did you use bronze or black underneath? Good question. Do I remember? <laughs> I well, obviously Zora's head is bronze. Yes. So I'm not sure. It was either it bronze or black? Yeah. What's the back of it? It looks like it's black. A black base. It does look like it's a black base. No, it's brown. It's bronze. Oh, there you go. There you so go. no, it's absolutely <laughs> beautiful and um, a stunning, stunning piece and um, love the story behind it. So, of course, next we're going to talk about your wonderful wearable art and delving into the wonderful world of that. And um, you did this incredible piece called The Fall, but um, it all started with another art bra, which was this one. Did you want to just talk quickly? I've got it up on the screen, Natalie. Did you want to just... Um, Mention oh, yes. me and I'll bring you up then. Yep. Uh, so originally this was called Autumn Looms 
Uh, and I think I was reading Mrs. Dalloway, uh, Virginia Woolf at the time and approaching 50 <laughs> and wondering <laughs> what was going to be in my attic. Um, yeah, you know, like you get older and you just suddenly have to think about it, I suppose. And so I was thinking about that I'm going into my autumn years once you turn 50. And so that was inspired by uh, just because it's autumn, it can also be the most beautiful season. So that was the plan for this piece, um, which I have. I can probably get a little bit closer. It's a little bit worse for wear because it was 2017 and I have had to, uh, oh, we changed the neckline so that it would sit better on Ella for the next segment. So it has changed slightly, but that's what you love about Powertex, isn't it? You can always <laughs> add and change and modify. Um, exactly. So, so in what have you used on this piece, Natalie? Um, again, this would have been bronze Powertex, and I've just also included a lot of fake plants. Beautiful. But the seed pods are all were all real. Yeah, the textures are just stunning. And again, have you used some of the pearl red and the bronze gold? What colours did you use uh, for your refreshment? Uh, no, I would probably use the power colours in this one because I was going for that yeah. sort of matte autumn yeah. and probably highlighted with with uh, the gold colours. Um, Beautiful. I would it would this would have so many layers of colour on it because I would have, <laughs> you know, because you've got to brighten it up sometimes. If I haven't if I haven't put a lot of um, varnish over the top the you want to you can always brighten up the colors by giving it a quick once over before it goes on stage or something so yeah like that looks like yellow ochre to me so yep. i love the yellow yellow ochre um and it would have been probably reds and then i blend a lot now especially i blend the red with the orange with the yellow with the white uh yeah until Perfect. i get what i want Beautiful. yeah so I think there's even a butterfly shoved in there. <laughs> the textures are just stunning. So I know um, you've got that lovely stringy texture and it's all the contrasts that are really, really nice. Oh, yes. I do wish yeah. that the Australian um, government wouldn't keep burning that when it comes into <laughs> Australia because that's like my fav one of my favourite Powertex products and they just won't let you let it into the country. Yeah, so we're using mop string now, right, and tearing it apart. <laughs> yes, yes, we are. We are um, it that. is a beautiful product. Um, all righty, and so we're going to also um, talk about your beautiful art garment, which um, the um, art bra actually inspired and led you on to for reverse garbage was the um, wonderful piece that you did called the fall and um so we'll take a look at that i'll pop up the first slide for people so they can see that yes. and you can just talk to a couple of those um images um so hang on there we go look at that doesn't ella do my piece justice i'll just turn that banner off so we can really see it because it is just stunning uh, um so she, so yeah, I was very lucky because I convinced my daughter. I think we just came out of a show. So it was in 2019 and she just finished Daddy Long Legs with me, um, which was a great hit. And she loved me to bits because I produced it. <laughs> so she suddenly <laughs> would do anything for me, including wearing a ridiculous costume on stage, which was hard to balance because there's no way I could balance that on my head like she could. She looked so grand being able to walk walk with all that on her. Body. So I'll bring up the second slide and then everyone will be able to see that's the full garment there. So it was a bit tricky because I decided I wanted to do it in cardboard and the idea was the top uh, is supposed to represent the sun um, and that the sun sort of is where all life comes from on the earth when you think about it. And it was about the damage that we're doing to the earth without kind of realizing that we're doing it um and because i already had this autumn wondering whether we're in the decline of humans with all the the just environmental degradation and then i also had this idea where because i you know one of my sliding door moments i could have been an archaeologist so i was thinking about um even in my backyard i've been down there and i've scavenged rocks and stuff out to be able to make stands 
And in there, I found like little glass jars and, and rubbish that always seems to end up down there, including some of my own rubbish coming out of my studio off the back deck. And you're like, ah, oh. and, and you, that's what archaeology is a lot of the time, just that rubbish that we bury. So I was thinking about all the things that fall into the earth that we just sort of discard that's sort of meaningless. But I wanted to keep the flower theme from the autumn blooms, autumn blooms top. Um, so that's why it was called the fall. Uh, and, yeah. I'm not sure why I decided to go with the cardboard because that was quite hard <laughs> hard to do. <laughs> <laughs> so that's all like toilet rolls around the top that's holding it together. And luckily I had that belt because I also make scavenger bags out of industrial waste. Uh, so people sometimes send me old belts to make the straps for the arms for the bags. So I had that's where I got the belt from. And then I had to hide underneath like Ella's legs and stuff. So I thought oh, I'll just do that out of uh, curtain material which I wouldn't recommend uh, doing or maybe watering down Powertex a little because it just got really stiff and brittle and I was still sewing it together before she went on stage every time it tore. <laughs> As you do. <laughs> yeah, it's not the first time I've put my daughter in some costume that requires, yeah, stapling or something before she goes on stage. It's just a stunning piece and I love the um, concept behind this, Natalie, um, so, you know, just using the garbage and um, just the whole concept and the headpiece is phenomenal. What a beautiful headpiece. I mean, I love big headpieces, you know that. Um, and it's just stunning. And I know how difficult it is to get a big headpiece like that to balance. So what challenges would you say you had through um, creating the artwork? Do you want me to get it down? I can take oh. it off the wall. It might go back up, but I can get it down. Sure. Okay. <laughs> so the very first challenge is that I wanted a round thing on top of a head, <laughs> which is not, you know. So so I think it's an old hula hoop that I used. Oh. Um, and then a cane because we sell a lot of cane, uh, both um, Powertex Australia and Bag End, you know, for wearable art pieces um, and because cane works so well with Powertex. So there would have been cane put in through there. But then I kind of had to make a headpiece out of wire for the hat. Um, and one of the challenges is getting that bit kind of right. I think you always make it a little bit too small because the Powertex can shrink it. Yeah. Um, and also I haven't played a lot with watering down Powertex at this point for wearable art pieces either so that might change it um, I do leave my pieces around the head uh, a little bit more flexible um, it's just so that like this ended up moving it so you could attach it to the ears uh, okay. and I did put in a uh, elastic band to hold underneath which might have been better if it was kind of skin tone but it didn't it didn't seem to take away too much from the piece um, yeah, so I would have just then covered that with masking tape. Uh, I had to put some foam underneath so that she could handle the handle Where it the pressure. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, it's a bit uh, yucky. Um, and then I wanted it to counterbalance a little bit. So on the back, Look I actually that. put this bird. So it's an upside down bird because the you know I always have to yeah, a bit of the macabre wonderful. in my work. <laughs> yeah, so I'm a bit of the macabre. Um, so it's dead of course because we're not looking after the planet uh, and that their cane on the back as well just power text up it's beautiful the structure is very clever um, because I do understand how difficult it is to um, make a headpiece that you can move in and walk around in and it's a real consideration that you've got to give to um, when you're creating something an artwork where you want it to move Yes, and as I said, I was very lucky too because I had um, my daughter who's a performer, so she also knows how to walk <laughs> gracefully across the stage. <laughs> handy. Awesome. Um, yes, and that was you... a lot of fun. Oh, yes. Sorry, um, hang on. 
did you want to say a little bit more about the um, actual, like, can you identify some of the materials that you've used when we look at mm -hmm. up close at that garment? So I'll just bring up the full garment again because it is so stunning. And so, of course, what Natalie's saying is that she's used loads of recycled materials because the um, wearable art competition was part of reverse garbage and they mm. actually are all about recycling. Um, so, yeah. So if I can get it a bit closer, I've taken the skirt off because this came on, this was a separate piece over the top of that skirt anyway. Um, and also in the inside, which is still not completely, I put in these little Coke bottles and that's where the flowers, so we're made, some flowers out of rubbish which we I've got a couple left but a lot of them were handed out on the day um so that's, that's fantastic. how that bit happened um so yeah because I started making all these flowers mm -hmm. so these are just the masking tape flowers that we do quite a bit of with the wire um but then I also stuck in like a Barbie doll head so <laughs> these these would be made out of toilet rolls um I had tops, so there's some bottle tops in there. bottle top i love working with bottle tops i put them into <laughs> quite a few things and uh, there's a straw uh yes and ring pulls because i use ring pulls a lot as well um I even made, there, I think, can't they yeah yeah they come up really cute so i make little i make these as flowers on sticks so uh, i have an everlasting flower range um yeah, so you can that's a lovely flowers. idea. Um, and then I have, uh, oh, this one here I love, if you can see. So in the centre of that flower there is actually an orange. So it's a dried oh. out orange. <laughs> Doesn't that look terrific? And there the yep. ring pulls around it as well. Yep. Um, I've used old beads on the side there. I did love that one. That was it's on sideways. Sorry, you can't see that as easily. But they're just old beads. That I had, I made little insects because, of course, if you're going to kill off your flowers, you're going to lose all your insects. So all the there's a few like weird and wonderful insect creatures embedded in there. I think this is the easiest one to see <laughs> on this side. Um, oh, there's lots of rubbish in here. And now it's so much work, isn't it? Um, yeah. To do a wearable art piece. So the old earrings. That was cute. Water. And I even have little mushrooms on there that I made. That's my favourite mushroom, which I'll put up a picture of later on my website. So that's a oh, little yeah. mushroom. Fantastic. Yeah. But it's made out of an orange. <laughs> so, yes. Awesome, <laughs> awesome. So I love the ingenuity of it. And it is a lot of work, isn't it, doing a wearable art piece? Um, yes. But it's very rewarding to actually see it moving on the stage once it's finished. Yeah, yeah, I do wish I had a lot more time because there's there could be a lot more elements where you could make that um, combining power text because it gets quite hard and stiff to be able to move it around on a stage. Um, yeah, play with those ideas a little bit more, but it does does take up a lot of time, which is why the bras are a really good place to start because um, you can, it's just a smaller <laughs> I, I love the Smaller. idea of, of making a permanent flower arrangement like you talked about as well. That's such a great idea and I'm sure that will be a great takeaway for everyone who's watching today. I'm sure everyone's probably going to go, oh, I'll make a um, fake flower arrangement because, of course, we've got our upcycling challenge at the moment that we're doing in the Creative Hub on Facebook and so everyone's participating in that. So it'll be wonderful to see what comes out of today's sessions maybe we'll have some arty bras and some things made with toilet paper and whatever people can scrounge so I'm sure you'll all get very very creative based on what Natalie showed you today and she just has such a wealth of knowledge and Natalie you're just so clever at putting elements together and your <laughs> colors are always absolutely amazing how you do that so I just love your artwork you know that um and um the wearable art piece is just stunning so uh yeah well done it's awesome 
Um, now, you were going to have a chat to everyone as well about what you've got coming up in Queensland because, of course, Natalie is the distributor for Powtex in Queensland. So if you're there in Queensland, definitely connect with Natalie. Go make a time to meet her down the studio. She's got the most amazing studio. It's like it is at Bag End. It's a warren of creativity. And um, she also has Powtex there that you can actually pick up as well. So, um, yeah, get involved with Natalie and tell us a little bit more about what's coming up in Queensland, Nat. Okay. So we've been inspired ourselves over here, uh, which is always good coming onto these, you know, watching the Powtex lives. And because the bras came up, uh, we realised that we haven't done we thought when we first did that exhibition back in 2017 that maybe we would do it annually or every second year and it's like 2017 so we're like oh, what happened <laughs> life um so we we're, we're actually talking to a couple of charities with um and we're down the rabbit hole and so we will be looking at putting on another charity exhibition that people can get involved in and i will be putting more of that into the bag and studio newsletter once we've finalize some of those details it's all a little bit tricky at the moment because you want to do something really uh, great but you're you know it's a bit difficult with COVID um, but even with COVID happening it looks like the ECA is also going ahead which is the Brisbane um, exhibition uh, which is like the the show I suppose where everyone has a big um, show in each capital city so ours is on in August, and during that time, I've just been approached to maybe do something out at the ECA. So I'm hoping I get a day out there just working on a piece so people can come and see, uh, and maybe also some demos. I haven't quite figured out exactly what I can do yet to get that timing right. And we're also trying to travel a little bit. So I've got a, like a, a workshop down on the Gold Coast after the Gold Coast show because we've got a whole bunch of new Powertex people coming out of the Gold Coast because I don't think, even though I'm in Brisbane, you know, it doesn't take much for people not to know about you. Um, and hopefully I'm off to Kingaroy again to the lovely Two Sisters workshop um, out there because that's just such an amazing creative group of women out, or, and men, sorry, um, out there. <laughs> Awesome. So, yes. Well, that's all very exciting and lots of things that people can connect with. So, like mm. I say, if you guys are in Queensland, definitely connect with Natalie. And so you can actually connect with Natalie on Facebook through Bag End Studio. Just um, pop that into the search. Bag End Studio Workshops and Powertex Training. Or you can go to her website if you are in Queensland and you want some Powertex supplies. Um, so, yeah, connect with Natalie. As you um, know, she is amazing, amazing artist and um, just has been working with Powertex nearly as long as I have, haven't you, Nat? Yeah, I have. I, you know, when you go back over the photos, you're kind of like, oh, wow, I did that back then. Yeah, what have I been doing in the meantime? But, yeah, you have. It's Yeah, and you've grown a beautiful art business as well there in Queensland and um, have lots of beautiful um, people that you work with and um, they're all over Queensland. So if you are in Queensland, you can actually mm -hmm. connect with some of the trainers and uh, there's just some fantastic Queensland trainers that you guys can access. So um, take advantage and go to some workshops when everything's opened up. <laughs> Yeah, well, we're lucky because in Queensland, I do have a very um, big network that's growing too of trainers. So that is our other exciting thing. We're forming, um, we're doing some new painting workshops soon. So stay tuned. They'll be out in September. Um, yes, with a new trainer coming on board, who I'll announce probably shortly. She's probably watching it right now, aren't you, Christina? Um, so that's extremely exciting because we're getting stuff coming over from Norway because somebody happened to move from Sweden and yeah has come along into our group so our little down the rabbit hole trainer group is going um gangbusters and of course we've still got erica all the way up in north of queensland although i think we had a covid case up there didn't we erica ah um it's so very very excited i love my group they're so yeah we so dynamic and um yeah if you really need to do a workshop and feel good about yourself they're definitely the feel good girls <laughs> awesome <laughs> so um we, Natalie and I would love to hear from you now what you've been inspired to create 
from um, mm. the session today because, of course, both of us are all about inspiring you guys out there to get into a bit of arty creativeness. And um, we have, like I say, there is the Powertex Australia Creative Hub on Facebook where you guys can share your creations and we'd love to see you do that. And, of course, Natalie as well has the Creative Tribe on Facebook, so you need to join both um, and um, connect with us and share some of the creations. And at the moment, like we mentioned earlier, we've also got the Upcycling Challenge and um, so there's a great prize at the end of this month. It's going to be uh, there's a... My online workshop, Rust Effects, is going to be given to someone as a little giveaway in acknowledgement of their contribution to the group and what they've shared and the amount of posts and likes and comments they've got over the time. So pretty exciting. But even if you haven't been part of it the whole time, still definitely share, right, Natalie? We yes, want to definitely. Activity. Yeah, well, we're getting a bit of a buzz now because I noticed there's a lot of people from overseas jumping on and also sharing yeah. what they're doing, which is fabulous as well because we can connect worldwide. Um, but, yeah, I'm in, super impressed. Holy, yeah, I love going through the stuff and go, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I wish I thought of that. <laughs> yeah, no, it's amazing. And it's such a great group and everyone's so lovely and very encouraging. So if you want a really good place where you can feel safe and share your creativity and uh, it is just such a great place to connect. So if you work with Powertex in your artwork, that's what it's for and to share your love of Powertex uh, with each other. And, of course, if you do want to know more about Powertex, you can go to the Powertex. Australia website as well and I put up Natalie's website earlier for you too so if you haven't got your hot little hands on any power checks yet beware it is very addictive <laughs> um, so isn't it Natalie it is but a little goes a long way I've found <laughs> once you start playing with it um, yeah you realize it could just do so much and I love it because you can just switch off and switch on when you really need to as well yeah awesome Alrighty, um, let's just take a quick look at some of the comments that if you haven't popped in what you're going to create yet, make sure that you do. And of course, Natalie and I will go into the comments afterwards mm. and make sure that we have answered any questions that we might have missed because we both got busy chatting and I got absorbed in Natalie's stories. So I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Um, so yeah, Robin's just saying fabulous ideas. And when you're um, working on your bras, do you put it on a model like behind you? That's a great question. Uh, uh, so when I was doing it with other people, because I did workshops um, in the bra art as well, uh, yes, I did. Um, and again, I think since 2017, we probably have learned a few more techniques that I'd like to try if I did it again, which may be happening. Um, but I can also cover the torsos in uh, glad wrap uh, so that also well you say it's going to keep it clean but let's be frank i'm never clean <laughs> but you can i can power text them at some stage which i haven't done yeah unlike some of those busy bees on on uh, power text um australia side who just keep pumping out all this stuff it's like oh <laughs> so it doesn't matter if your torso gets yuck because you can just create power text over the top when you're finished with it anyway right Exactly. Yeah. Um, if not, I probably, I might have stuffed them. That's probably how I did it. I probably stuffed the inside with glad wrap. That's always, because um, you can, as long as you don't leave it there, you've got to keep testing the glad wrap, pull it in and out. Otherwise it will become a part of the artwork. Mm, nice. <laughs> and um, yeah, I can't wait to see those torsos, Natalie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I've got a few that haven't been, I've got a whole mannequin. And you nearly saw the whole mannequin today. I was sitting there. Fun. Yeah, but the, the headpiece was it's like, oh, I didn't realise the mannequin's head was bigger than mine. I thought I had a big head, but the mannequin's <laughs> head was too big to fit the headpiece on. So, uh. so Mariana <laughs> is just saying that she loves the flower idea. And so, oh. Mariana, hopefully we see some creative um, flowers made from you this week. Um, so, yeah, we just hope that you guys go away this weekend and you just have a wonderful weekend of creativity. And so from Natalie and I here today, um, we just wish you a very creative weekend and we look forward to seeing you guys um, 
next week with me live um, and Natalie very soon again. Um, it's always wonderful to have you on uh, the live with me, Natalie, and thank you so much for sharing your creativity and your an amazing artwork and energy with everyone today. Thank you. Oh, I love coming on. It's good. <laughs> okay. And so bye, everyone, and have a fun week, and we look forward to seeing lots of creativity in the hub. Ciao. Oh, hang on. Ciao. Oh, this hand. Ciao.